A thought I want us all to keep throughout this talk, and preferably <coughs> afterwards, is a quotation from James Jeans, who was a physicist in Britain in the early 20th century, who was one of the first followers of Einstein. And in fact, he wrote a great deal on the theory of relativity, both general and uh, special. And in, one, in his book, The Mysterious Universe, he made this comment. Remember, this is a physicist, and not a modern one. That is not a very modern one. The universe looks more and more like a great thought rather than a great machine. Now, that's incredibly important because that is one of the first comments coming from the scientific community that points toward the end of the mechanistic paradigm. Now, it actually already has ended, but most of the scientists haven't noticed. <laughs> Especially the science educators haven't noticed. When astrology gets flack from the scientific community, you will almost invariably find that it is led by uh, professors who are not of science, science writers and science educators. Very seldom do scientists get involved unless they're sort of shamed into it, which happened in, 19, in the uh, 1970s when the 186 scientists, including many Nobel laureates, signed a statement against astrology. But they probably wouldn't have bothered if they hadn't been uh, urged to do so by the organizing group. Uh, frankly, the attitude most scientists have toward astrology is, well, I don't believe in it, but eh, I got better things to do. Okay, I can live with that. So what is meant by postmodern astrology? Well, in order to define this, I have to define some other terms. And at this point, you're encountering a tendency I've had for a long time, and it wasn't until I went to graduate school, where I spent a rousing 10 years, and we're getting my doctorate, um, where, I learned, where I learned that I was doing this like a scholastic. Modern people don't usually do this, but a scholastic always begins by rigorously defining every term that is used, so you don't spend the whole time discussing what do you mean by the terms rather than getting to the substance of the argument, because they're laid out at the beginning. So the first term we have to define is modern astrology. The second term we have to define <coughs> is traditional astrology, or more accurately, astrologies. Postmodernism as a philosophical and literary movement, uh, which <laughs> caused a great deal of humor in um, my graduate school career, and postmodern astrology. Let me back up to postmodernism for a moment. Postmodernism was an extremely skeptical movement that occurred in literary and philosophical circles, also artistic, uh, which basically came to the conclusion that our that the past is, is a fictional construction. Well, you've heard the past, is, the history of everything is written by the winners. Well, they took this one step further to say that basically you can't really say what the past was about. Uh, I had a professor of Byzantine studies in graduate school, and she recounted a story that happened to her when she was an undergraduate uh, when she was taking a course in history, it was because she was a historian, but it, was a, it had some literary implications, and so there were a lot of people from the literature departments in there. And the professor looked and said, I, said, I see there are a lot of literary types, as he pronounced literary, literary types in this group, and I just want you to know that for the purpose of this course, the past really happened. <laughs> now, you can debate that point philosophically, but I, there is the recognition of the past having certain qualities is not entirely a hallucination, although the details are subject to dispute. So, first, principal stages and divisions in the history of astrology. This is how I'm going to define what I mean by traditional astrologies, um, uh, modern astrology, and postmodern. First of all, we have pre-horoscopic astrology in Mesopotamia. Dates, who knows, to about 500 BCE. Now, what do I mean by pre-horoscopic? The, there are two kinds of astrology, I mean, two mega categories of astrology. There is non-horoscopic astrology, which is any correlation between terrestrial events and celestial phenomena, but there are no charts. 
Like, for example, tides could be given as an example of this, or commodity prices fluctuating, unless you use birth charts or commodities exchanges or something like that. Um, by and large, financial astrology is non-horoscopic, although there are ones who follow a horoscopic approach, where they look at the charts of companies and things like that. And specifically, the word horoscope, let me just make sure I don't have a slide on that. No, I don't. Okay, good. Um, the word horoscope does not mean what most people think it means. First of all, I think you're all aware it doesn't mean a column in a newspaper. I hope. Are we all agreed on that one? That's a misuse of the word. Most of us think it means the chart. It doesn't. It means some point in the chart that defines a house as a first house. Most particularly, the ascendant. Uh, and the word horoscope is often described in texts as meaning watcher of the hour. Well, etymologically, you could make that interpretation with a totally stupid translation. The correct translation is marker of the time. Time marker. So the ascendant marks the time. Now, where does it mark the time, you may ask, since we use the meridian in this culture. If you didn't know it, that's what we do. Uh, Egypt. Egypt developed a system of telling times at night by watching the stars rising in the east. And th they, in fact, it is now becoming clear in recent research, invented the ascendant. So while it is true that the Mesopotamians laid a tremendous foundation, stay tuned for this afternoon talk, um, or early evening, I guess, um, while it is true that the Mesopotamians laid a tremendous foundation for astrology, their, hor their astrology was, until near the end of that period, non-horoscopic. They just correlated celestial phenomena with events on Earth. It was the Egyptians who invented the horoscope. So, while they didn't, and they didn't do it all that long ago, while they, while they used risings of stars to keep track of time, using it for blatantly astrological purposes does not occur until after Alexander the Great. So, non-horoscopic astrology is a fabulous antiquity, and just about every country, every nation on the planet has invented it at one time or another. We even have examples of, well, I was reading something, and I cannot cite the source, but where it mentioned a Native American tribes that would go to the mountaintops on the vernal equinox, which they measured by looking at shadows of uh, sunrise and so forth in the good old Paleolithic manner. Um, and when they do, they would look up to see where the planets were located in the heavens on that day. They were doing an ingress chart. Except they didn't think of it as an ingress, they just thought of it as omens for the year. They didn't do transits to it, they didn't do progressions to it, they didn't do any of that stuff. But uh, just about every culture has at some point developed a non-horoscopic astrology. So you can't really say who invented it. It's a constant human reinvention. Horoscopic astrology, on the other hand, as far as we can tell, was invented in only one place in time, and that place is Hellenistic Egypt. Um, I seriously dispute claims that it occurred earlier in India, um, and the reason is that, the, that there's no evidence of highly competent Indian astrology and astronomy that could calculate planetary positions in advance. That was what the Mesopotamians invented. They could calculate ephemerides, and that's necessary. You have to have that capability. Now, there is a problem about the history of India, and that is, in the West, documents were written on relatively imperishable uh, materials like clay tablets and so forth. Not, that was not the case in Egypt, but Egypt had such a dry climate that papyrus was um, a very durable material. In India, papyrus and all the other materials they used were not durable. They would rot in the heat and uh, so forth. So I can't guarantee that there was nothing going on in India of the kind but there's no evidence that is accepted by scholars at this point. And I'm not just including Western scholars. There are Eastern scholars have pretty much the same point of view or Indian astrologers, scholars. And I'm sure there are notable exceptions. Uh, I think most of you may be aware 
or many of you may be aware that there are recent indications of the fabulous antiquity of the um, uh, civilization of the Indus Valley and the reason why nobody notices a good deal of it is now underwater. Sea levels rose in the city, and they've fi been finding these cities all along the coast under the water. Uh, this does not mean that they were doing horoscopic astrology. It just means that they got civilized very early, much earlier than we generally recognize. So India civilization is incredibly old. No, no argument there. We don't know how old. Uh, the usual dating techniques don't work well with cities underwater. I'm not just being funny, it, they really don't. <laughs> the, sog fa the soggy factor gets really bad. Okay, so early horoscopic uh, astrology comes in after 500 BCE, which for those of you who don't know it means before the Common Era, and it's the scholarly way of saying BC because it divorces the calendar from uh, alleged times of the birth of Jesus, uh, who was almost certainly not born in the year one because uh, we even know who made the error. Uh, but when he was born, and in some people's minds, if he was born, is up for grabs, yet the system is so widespread now, they call it the common era. That gets around the problem. So the uh, AD has been replaced by CE, common era. Early horoscopic astrology in Mesopotamia, Egypt, and elsewhere in the Eastern Mediterranean Middle East dates 500 BCE to about 200 BCE. Now here's the problem. We really don't know a hell of a lot about that period. Somewhere in here, Mesopotamian and Egyptian ideas begin to mingle with ancient traditions in India. Um, th that mingling occurred fairly early, and I, and I know many uh, Vedic, or Jyotish I prefer to call it, Jyotish uh, people believe that it mingled only from India to Egypt, not the other way. Uh, but the Egyptians were fairly literate types. Uh, they were quite capable of inventing things on their own. For example, they were probably the greatest surveyors of the ancient world with these fabulously accurate astronomical alignments they made. I mean, every, a lot of people made good, accurate astronomical alignments, but the Egyptian ones were on a par Nothing else was on a par with what the Egyptians could do. But they didn't have any planetary astronomy until they learned it from the Babylonians. So those two nations, by fusing under, under the, possibly before the Greeks, with, under the Persians, but certainly after Alexander, is how horoscopic astrology came into existence. So, moving on. Do I have the same slide twice? Oh yeah, I'm good. Oh yeah, um, there is a small error here. Yeah, uh, three shouldn't be there. <laughs> Hellenistic astrology, mostly in the Eastern Greco Grecophone dominions. That term is intentional. That is Greek speaking, not necessarily Greek. There are very few Greek astrologers in the ancient world, but they all wrote in Greek, because after Alexander the Great, that was the common international language. So, and these dominions were in the east and later the eastern part of the Roman Empire. This Hellenistic astrology dates from about 200 BCE to 600 CE. And while most, for most other purposes, the Roman era is not considered Hellenistic, uh, in the east, for cultural and scientific purposes, there was no break when the Romans conquered the east. They, things just kept on going the way they were. What The break occurred when the uh, Roman Empire became Christian, and then around 600 BC, the Byzantine emperors, who were all that's left, really began coming down like a ton of bricks on astrology. Fortunately, by that time, a good deal of Byzantium had been conquered by the Arabs, and in the Arab dominions, it kept right on going. So let's, let's acknowledge that debt to the Arabs. If they hadn't done that, astrology might have died. Okay. Now, Jyotish, or the horoscopic astrology that evolved in India and nearby regions, dates somewhere around 600...